Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating background images and also looking a little bit at reference images. So what are background images and why would I do a tutorial on them? Well, the background images are images that you use as a reference in your Blender interface so you can follow them to model whatever you're trying to model. For example, if you have a car in the background, you just follow that outline to try to uh, recreate your model. And the reason I'm doing a tutorial on it is many tutorials that you'll follow as far as creating a car, truck, plane, or, you know, a lot of things out there that exist in the real world, uh, you will need a, a background image or background images to follow. So I wanted to create a tutorial that I can reference back to as far as creating these background images. So let's look at some background images or at least where you can get them at. Here's a website called the-blueprints.com. Uh, I go to this often when I'm looking for background images or reference images to create backgrounds. Uh, they have a lot of nice images in here. Trucks, cars, guns, boats, um, planes, sci-fi vehicles, all kinds of great stuff. So this is a nice reference to go to. But of course, you know, if you Google things, you can also find some reference images. So what do they look like when you bring one up? Well, I have one here that I brought up from probably that website. And this is showing, you know, the top, the side, front, and rear view. And when you're looking for your background images, what you want to try to find is at least three views. Um, you can work off of one or two views, but, you know, the more views you have, the better off you'll, you'll be when trying to recreate your model. So what you want to do is bring this image up in your favorite graphics program, and you want to crop each image out and make it, make it its own image. Now with the top view, something uh, special that you'll have to pay attention to is you want to rotate that 90 degrees so that the front of it is pointing down. In the uh, reference image world, if you look straight on your, you know, the front of your drawing here, uh, this is of course the right and that is the left. So once you found your images and you've broken them apart like you need to, then you want to go into Blender and the first thing I'm going to do is just select this cube and X delete it, get it out of the way so we can see what we're doing. As you can see my 3D cursor, the little red and white round thing here is in the center. If it's not in the center on yours you want to do a shift S and choose cursor to center. Uh, we want to make sure this is in the center so that we can uh, align our uh, images here. So, in order to bring our images in, we want to hit the N key, bring up this menu on each of your screens here. And then in our menu, you want to scroll to where you see the backgrounds, background images, check that, drop this down. And I have the top, front, and right views here, so that's what I'm going to be working with. And you just want to do an add image. And this one is going to be the top view, so I'm going to select that, open the image, and I'm going to find my reference images, and I'm going to choose the top. So there's my top view. I'm going to do the same thing on our other views here. I'm just going to come to the uh, background images, check that, add image. For this one, I'm going to choose the front image, open, find my images again, choose front. Same thing down here, add image. This one is actually the right view that I got. So I'm going to open that and choose that one. Okay, so there's our images. Now what we want to do with these images is we want to make sure that they're all centered in the 3D space. So as we're working and following these images, they're going to match no matter which view you're, going to, you're working in. So in other words, this uh, side view is going to be the same length in the 3D space as this top view. So how do we align these images so they're pretty much as good as we can get them? Well, the easiest way that I know of is what I do is I normally do a Shift A and I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to choose mesh there. So that's why we had the 3D cursor in the center there. We want to make sure that this is centered. Now something to keep in mind when you work with this plane is you do not ever, ever, ever want to move it. Uh, you can scale it, 
but never move it or else you've just changed your complete uh, off center. So what I'm going to do is just scale it and I'm going to bring it up about like that and I'm going to hit Z to go in wireframe mode. And as you can see, they're not quite matching up. I'm just looking at the sides of the car here. So what I'm going to do is come down to where I added the background images and there's some settings here. As far as X, you know, move along the X axis and the Y axis and you can change the size of it as well. So I'm just going to move it over along the X a little bit. And I'm just looking at, you know, kind of eyeballing it right now and making sure it's in the center. And then I can scale my uh, plane a little bit here again and see if it's matching the sides, which it's pretty pretty close right now, so that's good. Now I'm going to do an SY to scale along the Y axis. And I need to move that, the image a little bit here. So I'm just going to actually move it up a little bit. Okay, so that hits right there on the edge there and right there and on the sides as well. So that's kind of where I want it. I want it right in the center there of, of what that plane is. So we'll leave the top view for now and come over to the front view. And this is one case where you can move this plane because we're not going to move it from side to side or you know along the X or Y axis, but we do want to move it along the Z axis because we want to get some depth here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and do an E extrude while this is selected. If it's not selected, then A select all. And just E extrude down the Z axis. And again, I need to hit my Z key here for a wireframe. And that's pretty close. I'm going to tab out of edit mode there. And um, let's see. Let's see if we can move this up a little bit. So that's actually pretty close, but if you need to get any, you know, more uh, detail as far as the the settings, you can actually come in here and change the decimal, the decimals on these instead of just using the default, you know, 10 spaces at a time or whatever. So we'll say this is okay. I'm not going to go into, you know, getting these exact, but when you do yours, you do want to get them exactly as, you know, as perfect as you can. Oh, another thing here I didn't notice. I was, I need to do the side to side. It's pretty far off, so I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Okay, so they're hitting the side pretty good there. So now I'm going to come down to my right view, hit Z to go into wireframe. And as you can see, this one is way, uh, way off. It's not fitting at all. So in this case, we need to come down to our settings. And this is where we're going to use the size function. I'm just going to slide this up a little bit so that it gets close. And I'm going to move this image up a little bit. Okay, that's sort of centered there. But as you can see on the sides, it's not matching at all. And this brings up a good point. The images that you use as far as background images, I'm going to say 99.99% of the time, which is pretty much every image that I've ever used, does not match up perfectly. Uh, maybe if you use like a vector drawing or something, you might get a little bit better um, matchup. But uh, as, as far as these images, I mean, you can kind of drive yourself crazy trying to get them to fit. but uh, a lot of times they just don't match up. So what what do you do? Well, the best thing that you can do is kind of average out the um, the size of it. So if I come over to um, let's go back to the size. I'm just going to move this up some. Okay, so it's actually kind of exaggerated here. I'm I'm missing the top. But it is getting closer to the sides, and I can move those over to average those out so it's centered a little bit better. So you can get it as close as you know possible, even though you have some errors in the image itself. So once you're happy with your uh, your your plane, or actually your cube now, matching all of your images, then you can go ahead and in out of these menus. And if we look at it and come out of wireframe mode with a Z key. Then we have our block here, and depending on what you're making, of course, you could start with this uh, rectangular block, or you can just X delete it. And if you go back into 7 top view, there's your reference image. 
So that's how you create your background images. As you can see, they're all nice and centered. So when you work on the different views, hopefully they will match up so that when you switch over, you know, you're working on the top of the car, you see the same thing as far as the width over here. And when you're working on the side of the car, you're seeing the same kind of height that you're seeing up here on the front view. So that's background images. As far as reference images, I'm just going to take a minute to talk about those a little bit. If you go to your UV image editor and you do an image open, I'm just going to pull up um, a reference image that I have here of a cat truck that I tried to model. And uh, basically with reference images, I mean you've probably seen this before, but what you want to do is go out on the internet, depending on what you're modeling, just find something that matches what you're doing. You know, if you're doing a 69 Camaro, go out and search for 69 Camaro images and get as many nice images as you can showing, you know, the tires, uh, the, the back of the vehicle, the front of the vehicle, maybe the interior if you're going that far. Just the details that you need to see when you're modeling. And a lot of times what you'll do is when, as you're modeling, you'll have your reference image up here and you kind of refer to that as you go along with your model. So that's all that is, is just a, a reference that you can bring up in that UV image editor as you're going along. So that's pretty much it as far as background images and reference images. Hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial.